John Calvin explores the limits of human reason concerning the kingdom of God and spiritual discernment, focusing on three principal aspects. The knowledge of God, the understanding of His paternal favor, which is essential for salvation, and the regulation of human conduct according to divine law. He argues that even the most intelligent minds are profoundly blind in ascertaining the first two, particularly the assurance of divine favor. Calvin recognizes that philosophers occasionally articulate astute observations about the nature of God. However, he emphasizes that these insights are inevitably clouded by imaginative speculation. According to Calvin, God has granted these philosophers a slight perception of his existence to ensure they cannot claim ignorance as a defense for their impiety. This limited understanding serves to convict them rather than to guide them toward truth. Their perception, Calvin contends, is like a bewildered traveler momentarily illuminated by a flash of lightning that soon fades, leaving them in darkness and unable to advance. This fleeting enlightenment is insufficient for guiding one to the truth or enabling one to grasp it fully. Moreover, Calvin accentuates the significant presence of falsehoods intermingled with the occasional truths in philosophical writings, affirming that these fragmentary truths appear more by chance than by design. He asserts that no philosopher has ever come close to the assurance of divine favor, a critical component for overcoming the inherent chaos and confusion of the human mind. Calvin concludes that human reason alone cannot approach the great truths of God's essence and his relationship with humanity. This inherent limitation highlights the necessity of divine revelation and guidance for true spiritual grasp and salvation. Calvin's case indicates the futility of relying solely on human intellect for spiritual determination and maintains the indispensable role of divine intervention in making clear the path to genuine knowledge of God and his favor. Also Calvin, in his analysis of human spiritual blindness, delves into John 1.4. 5. To reveal the serious limitations of human intuitiveness in matters of divine knowledge. He debates that humans are often deceived by a false sense of their own distinguishment, which leads them to believe they are capable of grasping spiritual truths when, in fact, they are thoroughly ignorant. Calvin points out that the most compelling evidence of this is found in Scripture, specifically in the passage from John which states, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. This passage, according to Calvin, suggests that although the human soul is clarified by a glimmer of divine light, it is not sufficient to enable a true understanding of God. The light shines, but the darkness, symbolizing human ignorance, fails to grasp it, reiterating the innate inability of the human intellect to attain spiritual knowledge without divine intervention. Calvin interprets the term darkness as a declaration of the total absence of spiritual awareness in humanity. This metaphor of darkness conveys the idea that without the illumination provided by God's Spirit, humans remain in a state of spiritual blindness. Moreover, Calvin repeats John 1.13, which indicates that believers' capacity to embrace Christ is not a result of human effort or desire, but a divine act. This verse underlines that the flesh, representing human nature, lacks the capability for such elevated wisdom to comprehend God and His truths, unless enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Calvin supports this with Matthew 16:17, where Jesus acknowledges Peter's recognition of Him as the Messiah as a revelation from the Father, not derived from human reasoning. This demonstrates that true spiritual acumen is a divine gift, not an achievement of human intellect. Thus. Calvin's exposition of John 1.4, 5 aids to underscore the crucial need for divine illumination in figuring out spiritual truths, portraying human intellect as fundamentally inadequate without the intervention of God's Spirit. Furthermore, Calvin emphasizes that human knowledge of God is entirely the work of God, not a product of human effort or natural capability. He accentuates that without the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit, human nature is devoid of the gifts that enable one to know God. Calvin supports this with various biblical passages. For instance, Psalm 36, 9 states, With thee is the fountain of life, in thy light we see light. Affirming that divine illumination is important for perception. Similarly, 1 Corinthians 12, 3 notes that recognizing Jesus as Lord is possible only through the Holy Spirit, 
and John 3.27 reflects John the Baptist's recognition that divine realization is a gift from heaven. Calvin illustrates that even the teachings of revered figures like John the Baptist and Moses are ineffective without the Holy Spirit's intervention. He points to Moses' rebuke of the Israelites in Deuteronomy 29, 2, 4, where despite witnessing God's miracles, the people lacked spiritual intuition because God had not opened their hearts and minds. This indicates that human intellect alone cannot grasp spiritual truths. In addition, Calvin refers to Jesus' words in John 6, 44, stating that no one can come to Christ unless drawn by the Father, asserting the need of divine action. He explains that while Jesus perfectly shows God's will, this revelation remains ineffective unless the Holy Spirit enlightens individuals. Isaiah 54, 7, predicting a special blessing for the elect, demonstrates that this divine teaching is reserved for those chosen by God. Calvin highlights Paul's claim in 1 Corinthians 2.14 that the natural man cannot understand spiritual truths, which are seen as foolishness without the Spirit's revelation. Paul declares that worldly wisdom is incapable of grasping God's mysteries, as they require spiritual differentiation imparted by the Holy Spirit. In summary, Calvin firmly believes that true knowledge of God is a divine gift. Human wisdom and efforts are insufficient for spiritual recognition, which is accessible only through the Holy Spirit's illumination. This indicates the decisive role of divine grace in enabling one to know and enter the kingdom of God. Last but not least, Calvin maintains the indispensable role of the Holy Spirit in illuminating human sense. He begins by referencing the Apostle Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 17, 18, where Paul petitions for God to bestow the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon believers enabling the enlightenment of their awareness. This prayer points out that all wisdom and revelation are divine gifts, implying that human minds on their own are inherently blind and incapable of grasping their divine calling. Calvin challenges the Pelagian contention that God's guidance through his word alone is sufficient for understanding. He points to David's plea in Psalm 119, 18, where David asks God to open his eyes to perceive the wonders of the law. This prayer suggests that even with the inclusive wisdom embodied in God's law, true comprehension calls for divine intervention. Calvin likens God's word to the sunrise which brings light to the earth, but reiterates that without the Spirit's illumination, human minds remain in darkness. Further, Calvin repeats that even the apostles, despite being taught directly by Christ, required the Holy Spirit to fully know his teachings. Jesus instructed them to wait for the Spirit of Truth, as noted in John 14.26, to complete their education in the doctrines they had previously heard. This underlines the notion that divine mysteries can only be learned through the grace and illumination of the Holy Spirit. Calvin concludes that anyone who claims to realize divine truths without acknowledging their dependence on the Spirit's enlightenment is self-deceived. Such a person, in refusing to recognize their inherent blindness, becomes even more blind. Calvin's discussion firmly establishes that human understanding is weightily limited and wholly reliant on the Spirit's light to comprehend the deep mysteries of God. This profound need for divine illumination underscores the humility and reliance required of believers in their pursuit of spiritual wisdom and grasp. In conclusion, Calvin examines the limitations of human reason regarding the kingdom of God and spiritual perception emphasizing the essentiality of divine revelation for true judgment. He identifies three key aspects, the knowledge of God, the assurance of his paternal favor vital for salvation, and the regulation of human conduct according to divine law. Calvin argues that even the most intelligent minds are seriously blind in understanding the first two, especially the assurance of divine favor. He recognizes that philosophers occasionally enunciate astute attentions about God's nature, but these are often clouded by imaginative speculation. God grants them a slight perception of his existence to ensure they cannot claim ignorance as a defense for their impiety. This limited knowledge helps to convict rather than guide them toward truth, likening their perception to a fleeting flash of lightning that leaves them in darkness. Besides, Calvin dives into human spiritual blindness, notably analyzing John 1, 4, 5, which states, In him was life, and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This passage suggests that while the human soul is elucidated by a glimmer of divine light, 
it is insufficient for true understanding of God. The darkness symbolizing human ignorance fails to grasp the light, accentuating the innate inability of the human intellect to attain spiritual perception without divine intervention. Lastly, Calvin affirms that human knowledge of God is entirely a divine gift, not a product of human effort or natural capability. He cites various biblical passages to support this, such as Psalm 36, 9 and 1 Corinthians 12, 3, asserting that divine illumination is crucial for realization. Even revered figures like John the Baptist and Moses required the Holy Spirit's intervention for true comprehension. Calvin highlights the integral role of divine grace in enabling one to know and enter the kingdom of God, indicating the indispensable role of the Holy Spirit in illuminating human recognition.